What's up guys, we're back with a brand new video and if you are new around here, we're like 10 away from 300 subscribers. So if we can hit 300 subscribers, then that would be absolutely amazing and 30 likes of 300 subscribers, that sounds about right. So let's try to hit that on this video because I know you guys absolutely love these redrafts and this one is an absolute star studded redraft for the 2011 redraft. We've already done, I think, like 10 redrafts or something already, and each one of them you guys have absolutely love. So thanks for supporting these videos. So without further ado, let's get straight into the redraft. So at number 10, I've gone with Chad Wingard. Now he was originally drafted with pick 5 and started his career out on absolute fire. In his second year of football, he became an All-Australian for Port Adelaide. And just two years after that, he picked up his second All-Australian and people are saying that now this man was hands down like the best player in this draft but since about I'd have to say I did it like there's just he just hit like an almost like an injury hurdle where he just there's another injury after another injury he hasn't seemed to get better he's just been taking step backs it's like he hit his peak so early that now that everything he does uh just like doesn't even seem as good. He's still an absolute star player. I remember, I think for the first five rounds of the 2020 season, people were saying that this man was in Brownlow contention. Uh, sadly, after about five rounds, still he was nowhere near it, but he still has that star power, and I expect when Hawthorne jump back up the ladder in the next couple of years, he'll be in the forefront of doing that. And number nine, I've gone with Elliot Yo. Now, this man was originally drafted at pick 30 to the Brisbane Lions before eventually getting traded, I think, at the end of 2015 to the West Coast Eagles. And what an absolute steal this man was once he went to the West Coast Eagles. Uh, ended up being a two-time All-Australian since joining the Eagles. It was an All-Australian in 2017 and 19, and also picking up the best and fairest in 2017 and the Premiership side best and fairest winner in the 2018 season. So to win a, an all a best and fairest in a team that wins a flag is absolutely so hard to do, and he deserves all the credit he does get. Now, this man is criminally underrated, I feel, at some points, and he is easily a top three two-way midfielder in the comp. He almost, like, not started the trend of the two-way midfielder, but he almost put it, like, an elite category where this man will get was leading the tackle count in the AFL by, like, 30 tackles every year, but then he'll be an elite damaging midfielder. Uh, you see players like Jack Steele and Taylor Adams kind of take that model with their game now. And yeah, so this man is definitely worth pick 9. And number 8, I've gone with Brad Hill. He was originally pick 33 and this man got drafted into one of the most successful teams in AFL history, the Hawthorne three-peat. And he wasn't just got carried into three premierships, he was... A, like a huge part in these three premierships. Obviously, he didn't get the accolades that most other people on this list would get, but it's because his impact. He's a full team player. His ability to run both ways at an elite level. He sets up teammates like nobody else. And I, I feel like in the, the season 2019, when he won the Fremantle BNF, that he should have quite easily been an All-Australian that year, but sadly, Brad Hill d does not have any All-Australians to his name, and you're probably thinking, well, the two blokes just named on this list have All-Australians to their name, uh, but the difference that I find is that this man plays on a position where there's even an All-Australian spot available, you feel. Uh, like, they, they picked, they never actually picked pure wingmen, or I feel like this man would almost be an All-Australian every single year. At number 7, I've gone with Sam Doherty. Now, this man was originally drafted, like Elliot Yeo, to Brisbane in 2011 at pick 12. Now, this man, like Elliot Yeo, as soon as he got traded to Carlton, absolutely broke out into the scene. He's one of the most damaging halfbacks in the AFL, getting, uh, given his All-Australian spot in the 2017 season along with a 2016 at best and fairest at Carlton to go along with a few accolades he did you think this man will be one of the best players 
in the AFL for the next few years coming after his absolute brilliant start to his career. But sadly, uh, in I think pretty sure it was the 2018 season, pre-season, he ended up doing his knee. Everyone goes, like, this is so sad for a young player like this. And then the next year after that, he does his knee again. But in that, in that season, he did get named the co-captain with Patrick Cripps. So his leadership goes further than most people think. And I expect him to be in all Australian conversations for years to come. Because he certainly was in 2020. And number six, I've gone with Stephen Coniglio. Now, this man was originally drafted a pick two. And after a pretty slow start to his career, absolutely broke out into the scene in 2017. And since 2017, he's getting better and better. But sadly, he got injured at the back half of 2019. And most people, like myself, reckon if this bloke didn't get injured in 2019, he would have been in Brownlow Medal Conversations. That's just how damaging this man is. He's a different type of midfielder. And even though he doesn't have the accolades to his name quite yet in his career, he's still a very young player. And you expect him to be in the Brownlow Conversations for years to come. Uh, that 2016 year, I, I remember, well, I looked at the... I didn't watch this GWS game, but I look, look at the stat sheet. He has like 38 touches, like five goals. I'm like, what? Like, that's why I didn't really know much about Steven Coniglio. But ever since then, I've been watching him closely. And it was so sad to see him go down with that injury. And, have, and when he came back from his injury this year, he wasn't as good as he was in 2019. But he has to take... He's the captain of the team in 2020. And you can tell that that really took a toll on him. So I'd... I'll be watching this man very closely in 2021. Number five, I have another giant, and that is Nick Haynes. He was originally pick seven, and when he got drafted, he was originally drafted as a medium forward, but never really like turned it on as a medium forward. But ever since he went back, he's been one of the most damaging intercept markers in the AFL. Uh, people have to set up game plans just to stop this man, to stop him intercept marking. He plays a lot like Jeremy McGovern, and I feel like in 2020, he overtook Jeremy McGovern as almost the best in set marker in the game. That's just how impactful this man was to the GWS Giants. He's probably one of GWS's best players, in my opinion, even maybe their best player since Jeremy Cameron has left. And it'll be great to see what this man does in the future. And also, just got his first All-Australian in 2020 to go along with the he got nominated for an all-australian spot in 2016 to go along with that and number four i've got taylor adams now this man was originally drafted pick 13 to the gws giants and if you're seeing a theme why there's so many people that got drafted to the gws it's because that this is the draft where gws got all their players to build their team around and so there's no real surprise about how many gws players were naming in this so at pick four i do have taylor adams and Taylor Adams has had a, like a, a like a career where you think this man's an above average midfielder. He he took for a, a quite long time to finally hit that next step, but in 2020 this man took the next step with a few injuries to key players for the Collingwood side like Adam Trelaw, Scott Pendlebury, uh, Jordan Ngoi, and this man has stood up and you can see this man being the captain for Collingwood in the coming years, maybe even. Like next year, you know, you never know. This man is just that much of a leader on the field, a two way midfielder like Elliot Yo. And I expect this man to be in Brownlow conversations for you to come. And number three, I've gone with Toby Green at pick 11. Now, this man is a guy that has so much X factor, it's going off the charts. He's in the conversations of like Dustin Martin and Chris Matraka and people that just have that type of X factor in the game. Every time he gets the ball, something happens. And I feel like, like a few other players on this list, he doesn't have too many of like ridiculous accolades to his repertoire so far. But he is already a BNF winner. He's an All-Australian before. And he's been a leading goal kicker as a small forward. Like this man does it all. And I expect him to be in All-Australian conversations. And who knows, he could switch into the midfield role now that there are a few more GWS midfielders leaving. But I like him as being this dangerous X-Factor forward that he's shown that he can be in his career so far. And number two, I've gone with Tom Mitchell. Now, he was originally drafted at pick 21 to Sydney inside this draft. And this man has just been absolutely a ball magnet since he was in the AFL. He didn't feel like he was getting enough opportunity at Sydney. 
uh, once he was in that premiership side that lost to the Bulldogs in 2016. So he decided to request a trade to Hawthorne and ever since then he's been one of the most damaging midfielders in the AFL. In 2017 he ended up being an All-Australian and also came second in the Brownlow medal. So, he, so the next year he followed that up with another All-Australian nod and also a Brownlow medal, the 2018 Brownlow medalist and the man that I think is like, I, th I don't know if he holds the record, but he holds, I think he holds the record for the most touches in an AFL game, which is absolutely ridiculous. And even though, sadly, at the beginning of 2019, he did break his leg, and you can tell in 2020 he wasn't up to his best, but I expect him to have, you know, that, that little transition year, and then come out in 2021 and almost have another Brownlow year, because I feel like he still has that type of stuff left in him. So, yeah, I've gone with Tom Mitchell at number two. And number one, I've gone with Lockie Neal. Now, this man was an absolute steal in the 2011 draft, getting drafted to Fremantle at pick 58. And since then, this man has been, the start of his career, like a pick 58 usually does, you know, he was gliding into it. He was barely getting a game at Fremantle, which I would not blame. It would be hard to get a game at Fremantle because he got drafted into the Fremantle side, which is probably one of the best sides ever the Fremantle had. Played a few games when they were great, but as soon as they were, like, ending their their premiership era, this man came in, won, a, I think, won, like, two best and fairest at Fremantle before, like, eventually requesting a trade at the end of 2018 to leave Fremantle and join Brisbane and ever since then he's been the leading force in this Brisbane Lions team jumping up the ladder. Uh, he finished third in the Brownlow medal in 2019 with also getting his first All-Australian that year and then everyone knows 2020 this man took home the 2020 All-Australian or in 2020 Brownlow medal by 10 votes there was no one near him in the, the, this year he was obviously the best player in 2020 and to go along with that he did get a uh, little all australian to go along with that so this man is an absolute superstar and he's still in his prime and you expect this man to be in conversations for the 2021 brownlow definitely so that's the video guys make sure to drop a like on this video let's try to get the 30 likes and we're also like 10 subscribers away from 300 so we can we please get there that'd be absolutely amazing so thanks for watching guys make sure to drop a like and a subscribe and see you later